Senator Petty. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's 22 RS 3571. We have a, pardon me? And the topic is 13th check. Okay. <laughs> uh, Senator, second by Senator Hawk. Any discussion? Seeing that it's accepted. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Uh, next, we're going to start out with uh, questions for Spark. The committee had numerous questions on this Spark deal, but before we do that, I'm going to uh, allow Senator Hawk and Senator Petty to introduce their pages. So, Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I have won the page war this year. I have so many pages, they could be a book, but I feel honored <laughs> that I would like uh, Colby Taylor from Riley County Schools to stand up. He's a seventh grader there. And uh, you may have seen during our photo contest some of his work. He's been, a, I think, a two-time winner, right, Colby? So uh, could you give him a warm uh, Senate welcome? Also, uh, Senator uh, Petty has a page. Pages. More pages. than one, okay. Uh, and uh, I have pages here from Rosedale Middle School. It's in Kansas City, Kansas. And these are seventh graders. And uh, I'll ask them to t stand up as I call their names. I have Esther. And I have Palin. I had to keep practicing her name because I said it wrong three times, so I wrote it down perfectly this time. I have Alan. And I have Perry. And they are here from Rosedale Middle. And of course, next week they'll be in spring break, although maybe they'll be in snow before then. And with them is, their, uh, is an instructor from um, Rosedale Middle School, and it's Mr. Heck as well. Thank you for being here. OK, committee, we're going to uh, start with questions on the spark. I know yesterday. Many folks had different questions on Spark, so we have uh, John. What is it? Paradis? Paralisi. Sorry about that. I, and he's on on WebEx. Is that correct? John, are you there? I am here. Okay, thank you. So, committee. Uh, I know some of you had uh, some questions for Spark yesterday. I think Se Senator Petty had some. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did see that the Spark, some of the Spark committees are going to be meeting. Is it on Monday? And my question had to do with because I'd heard this specifically with uh, healthcare education subcommittee that um, there are. A, some there's been discussion about deletion of are not allowing some groups that did apply to now be considered so it seems like the rules are being changed uh, as we go along is the, and so my question would be is this the case um, we're not deleting any submissions um, <clears throat> well first thank you for inviting me sorry about not introducing myself but um, yeah, we're not deleting any submissions. One piece of context, though, is in terms of the idea submissions, we got over 800, accounting for about $13 billion of potential funding requests. And so as each one of the panels is working through what are the greatest areas of needs to focus on based on the data and really their judgment, and what are the greatest levers to focus on against those needs, some of the submissions will fall into the areas that they prioritize and some won't. So from that standpoint, based on what the advisory panels decide in terms of where um, they want to focus their recommendations and then where the SPARC Executive Committee decides it wants to focus its recommendations to the State Finance Council, um, some submissions will move through the process and some won't. Just, Senator Petty. Just as a follow-up, so um, thank you for that. I, I, I just hope that we wouldn't be uh, 
carte blanche eliminating certain categories and saying, well, they can get funding someplace else when in fact that's why they're applying because they're not. And also it, I hope that as we look at this, that one of the priorities would be is this one time money. And if it's one time money infusion and uh, whoever it is that's applying has the capital, has the support of their communities, I, I would I hope that that continues to be uh, top priorities. But my biggest concern is that carte blanche groups are being eliminated because they're being considered that they're somehow they're eligible someplace else. And otherwise, they would, they would not be com applying for this money if they didn't think it was, but if they met the ne their needs. Thank you. Senator Kirshen, did you have any questions? Senator Hawk? No. Senator Clays? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John, thanks for being here today. My question is in regards to the um, the economic development portion of the the task force panels, and looking through some of the submissions, I can't help but think that some of those would also qualify as as base grant applicants, and that there may be a tremendous amount of crossover there, and that perhaps it would be good to have a comparison between those who applied under Spark with seemingly no guardrails put up, and those who then applied similarly under base where there are a couple of uh, restrictions and requirements on that so that we could see side by side what that looks like. I am interested particularly in knowing if it makes more sense uh, for the task force to simply move more dollars into base and have that process be the distributor of funds for the economic development portion rather than having it go through the entirety of the SPARC task force. Um, that base grant process seems to be a pretty good one requiring some matching. Um, it has a cap on it so that the, you know, we've, we've all seen some of the 60 and $70 million asks out of that $750 million pot. Um, and I'd just be interested in seeing more clearly what those look like side by side. And if there were people who um, only put in an application for Spark and didn't put one in for base, if there would be the possibility to then move them over to base if that's the, the mechanism that was used to fund the economic development portion anyway. And I'd just be interested in your comments on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, sure, uh, great question. We've asked that ourselves. Um, you know, in terms of that, you know, we're acting as decision support um, for the advisory panels who end up making the ultimate recommendations. Um, the advisory panel did ask us to be able to do an overlay against uh, the submissions uh, to understand which ones may be in base um, as well as here. So that's something that they're taking into account um, as they work through areas to prioritize and within those areas um, which submissions to um, really focus in on on the priority areas. Um, in terms of moving money to base, um, haven't contemplated that, but um, things that go forward, um, you know, if the assumption is that, you know, each one of the areas that comes out of the advisory panels, then eventually from the SPARC Executive Committee, um, would have guidelines attached to it by those groups. Um, so it's not to say that, um, you know, things would just start from scratch um, when you started going into procurement um, for any of the things coming out of this process. The intent would be to keep the intent of those groups, um, you know, in place as um, these areas move through the process to procurement. Great. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate that. Senator Fagg, you. did you have anything? I don't. Okay. Senator McGinn. Thank you. And maybe I just haven't drilled down enough, but um, is there a way we can find out who the 863 entities are? Have I just um, missed learning, or 43? Um, yeah, there. Um, I believe on the recovery office website, there is a very okay. simple searchable list um, uh, that has all of that information. Okay, and then I was just looking at the chart on, oh, doesn't have page numbers. So, well, maybe it does. 
How about three? Uh, looking at the different advisory panels, would it also show what they've worked on and approved and moved forward? Um, no, that wouldn't because they're still in the middle of that process in terms of defining the areas they want to prioritize um, at the end of the process. So um, I can say that some of they're all in different places and some of them have done some loose decisions around areas that they're probably going to want to focus in on more, but no, they haven't made any final decisions on anything yet. So how do we as a, an elected official representing our district um, advocate for any particular thing when we don't know where they're at within the committee process? Um, they're all in the process and the panelists have seen them all. Um, I guess each one of the panels is has as its chair a legislator, so could talk with them. Um, Sure, but I don't know where they're at. I don't know where they're at in the process, and maybe I'll just go to the recovery site, and I'll probably mm -hmm. find everybody that I'm looking for that's asked me to advocate, and I'll probably know exactly what committee it's in so that I'll know who to talk to. Would that be, the committee is that is. correct? Sorry. Yeah, it does indicate the committees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do have a question, Mr. Chair, for yes. our no, go ahead. Chair. Yep who did have an amendment about taking money out on the docking building uh, because I felt like, and I'm not, I'm not my words, or not your words, my words of how I interpreted, because it sounded like there was certainty that, that it would get spark money. Where would I find that at in this document, or on the recovery site? Would I find that on the recovery site? Um. I think that the secretary would be able to speak to that. Um, you know, what the, what I was referring to was really around uh, the integrated process around what we're running now through the advisory panels, um, go through the advisory panel process, but I'll let the secretary speak to that. Is the secretary on, Mr. Chair? I didn't know she was. I didn't hear. Is the secretary on today? Yes. She is? Okay. Could I ask her that question? Sure. So, uh, second Good morning. Burns, there you are. There you are. Thank you. Could you confirm Sorry. that? Thank you. Could you confirm that the money that that there's money from Spark that will go to the docking restoration? Yes, I can confirm that. And part of it is that it didn't go through the same process as we're talking about today because the way the proviso was written uh, in last year's bill, it said that we had to identify any federal funds and if they were found and they were allowable that we were to obligate those funds. So I've worked with the director of budget and right now we've identified that up to 50% of uh, docking would be allowable. We are literally um, working with both the architects and our consultants to do the final allowability check to see to ensure that that number holds um, <clears throat> excuse me we know it will hit at the 50 percent mark but it might be a little bit higher um, and as we finalize the bridging documents um, that will allow us to confirm the the con final dollar amount and then we will be able to bring that back both to the division of budget and to all of the budget committees, because it will then allow us to know how much needs to then be paid for and how the exact dollar amount that we can charge against the ARPA funds. But because it was written in the proviso that those federal dollars once identified are immediately obligated, then it didn't go through SPARC or through State Finance Council because the proviso um, allow, allows for that obligation to happen automatically. The director of budget had already submitted to uh, the uh, to the recovery office for those funds, and those funds are currently being held uh, for both the docking building and the KDHE lab until we determine the final dollar amount. Do we know when we'll determine the final dollar amount? 
I'm within about 10 days of that. We are really close. Um, again, they have confirmed that that 50% mark is a, a definite. There's a few things that they are reviewing right now on the docking side to see if there are a couple of items that are allowable. With the new guidance that came out in uh, late January, early February, we've made a few adjustments uh, around that allowability versus what we looked at in the fall. So I, they are telling me that I should have it probably by mid to late next week and then we'll be able to provide that information. Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Alley, did you have any questions? Senator Solentrump, did you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have any of those uh, applicants uh, for Spark Monies been eliminated? And if so, have they been notified? Um, no one has been formally included or eliminated at this point. The advisory panels have not gotten to that point where they've made any decisions. And there is an indication of kind of where things may be going in terms of the flow of those meetings, but it's up to the panels themselves to decide under the leadership of the chairs. Any other questions? Seeing none, John, I might just ask one question. Uh, so, have you, has the committee con considered taking the total amount of dollars that you have uh, left to allocate and divide that by the number of applicants rather than picking choosers and choosing winners and losers? Everybody gets a piece of the pie? I have not heard that. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? Um, I haven't heard that. Okay, I, I just wondered if that was something that you would consider, it, you know, rather than you know, approving some and the rest stand on the sidelines. Just wondering. I would focus it however the Spark Executive Committee wanted me to. That would be kind of inconsistent with the guiding principles they've given us to date, but if they change it, um, so well, on the it's, service a, of the Spark it's an idea I'm throwing at you, so let's just okay. le leave it at that. Okay. Thank Understood. you, John, for being here. Appreciate it. Okay, committee, we're going to move on to. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We're going to move on to uh, Senate Bill 422 and Senate Bill 444 and uh, return to uh, the motions that we were doing yesterday when we adjourned. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, Senator McGinn. I think you had another one or. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to continue where we left I yesterday. Think, I think I'll wait until I hear all the other amendments. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. So I'm going to start then with uh, Senator Clays, where you left off yesterday. Senator Clays. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we just heard, 50% is a definite on the KDHE lab. I move to delete 32.5 million SGF of the 65 million SGF allocation for the KDHE lab for FY 2023. And it is literally printed in those words in front of you on canary paper now. We have a motion, we have a second. Senator Fagg seconds. Any discussions or questions on the delete for the uh, KDHE lab? Senator Petty. Um, my only question is how, it, how is this relating to what was done yesterday? Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it it doesn't have any direct relation. The the um, secretary just noted that they expect 50% to be funded by uh, federal funds. That would require only 32.5 million at, at most from the state then to um, to match that for the KDHE lab. The total is 65 million for the lab's uh, estimated construction costs. Senator Petty. Senator McGinn. So I just was curious why, again, we can't leave this off till omnibus because I just heard that we're going to know more in 10 days. Um, and when you're talking about a lab, um, I, there's a lot of details for uh, modern labs today and um, just wouldn't want to have to put something in when we could just, if we knew we had the money, we could easily delete it at omnibus. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Secretary just confirmed that 50% is a definite. I trust her and take her at her word. So it seems like 30, 32 
1.5 million is the max that we need to give, and we know that now, so let's go ahead and put it in as the max. Senator Solentrop. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would agree with the Vice Chair. <clears throat> you know, we need a more certain amount in our budget if we're going to kick this thing out so we know where we're at, and, that, and uh, this will help us do that. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion regarding a CAPERS policy change. I assume the sentence will be handed out on purple paper. Violet? I don't know. Go with that. Delete 10 million. I'm moving to delete 10 million SGF for conversion of certain KDOC employees, including juvenile correctional officers and KDWP law enforcement officers to the KPNF retirement system for 2023. I have a motion, second by Senator Fagg. Questions? Senator McGinn. So this is a policy amendment to make wildlife and parks level with Kansas police and fire retirement systems? Senator Clays. So it previously it would have moved them into the KPNF system. They're currently in capers. So the $10 million appropriation was to maneuver them over into KPNF. We're not doing that. So this is removing the $10 million. Yep. Other questions? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Senator Clay. Senator Hawk. Um, I think there is a bill on that. Could could you explain your thinking? Will that go back in if the bill magically passes? Senator Clays. Yeah, there's a point in time where we come back and we fund all the bills that require money, but at this stage, it doesn't look like that's moving. Gotcha. Thank you. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this one is on the Kansas Department of Education's Virtual Education State Aid. Let's see what festive color of paper we have this one written out on. Blue. It's just blue. I move to add language to increase virtual education state aid from $5,000 per pupil to $5,600 for FY 2023, all from existing resources. And there is the language in front of you on white paper as well. Senator McGinn. Thank you. Um, could the carrier of the amendment explain uh, reasons why we're doing that? I mean, what's behind it to, to promote an increase? So I think this is a fixed number. And as, uh, as there is an increase in our dollars that we're giving per student, this isn't keep isn't moving with that, so this There's would move it. And this fixed. one stays fixed, so this is just a move. Yep. So we have a motion by Senator Clays and a second by Senator Fagg. Other questions? Seeing none. Oh, Senator Hawk. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, do we know roughly what the physical note might be on that? Up that 600. I'm for it. I just wonder if we know roughly what that might be. Senator Hawk, we do not have that at this time, but they're going to calculate that for us. I'd just like ultimately to know when we get to final budget. It's, but it's, it's, I, think it's, I think it's around five million. Yeah, but five to six million is what the estimate was, but for an exact number, I don't think we have. Okay. Okay. That's five approximate. Million. Yeah. I heard up to six million. So, 
Senator Petty. Uh, thank you, and uh, kind of along that same lines. And so this um, five to six million, it's going to be coming out of where? Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so it uh, it requires it come out of existing resources. As you're aware, there's a sizable increase in the overall state aid, so that um, that would just be a tweak inside there to pay for that five to six million out of those existing resources. Other questions? Education funds? Is that sorry about state aid? Yeah, the, yeah, state aid, yep. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Senator Clays. Nobody else wants to go? All right. No, <laughs> no I'll keep going. It's fine. Let's do Kansas Highway Patrol uh, aircraft. And it... Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. We're on a very bright orange paper, and it is a motion to add language authorizing the agency, agency to expend up to $9 million from the State Highway Fund for FY 2023 for the lease or lease purchase or purchase. Sorry, that's not in there, but I'm going to add that. My apologies. Or purchase of a Citation CJ3 Plus executive aircraft should allocations from the Spark Task Force not be available. Add 1.5 million to increase the transfer from the State Highway Fund to the Highway Patrol, and add language authorizing the agency to expend up to 1.5 million from the State Highway Fund for the maintenance of aircraft. And then also to add language requiring the sale of the King Air at or prior to delivery of the CJ3 Plus. Second by Senator Fagg. Question, Senator McGinn. So we're buying a jet for the governor. Is that what this means? S S Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It would be a uh, state highway fund purchase should there not be um, spark dollars available or qualifying for the purchase. It's currently in the governor's budget for federal funds. What we're doing here is simply adding that it could also be used from the state highway fund should that be rejected. And then we fund the maintenance. So we're buying a new governor's plane? Potentially. And how many passengers does that have, CJ3? Oh, goodness. Let me look it up. It's trying to compare to the uh, King Air. It is an eight-passenger plane. Quicker than Google. Fantastic staff. <laughs> eight. Eight passenger, eight passenger. Yes. And then did anybody look at the um, landing capability? I know one of the reasons we stuck with a King Air is because in Kansas, all the places we need to go, we can't always land on um, smaller communities' uh, runways. Yeah. Megan knows the runway landing uh, <laughs> Well, maybe she does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this this did come up. Come up. So thank you. I appreciate that question. Um, and and there was some concern about where uh, a particular jet could land. This requires a three thousand one hundred eighty foot takeoff length, um, relatively uh, short for jets. Um, but you are correct that it may require um, some uh, creative landing spots uh, when it comes to some areas of the state. Yes. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, be interesting to know how many runways we do have across the state that can handle that capacity. And is uh, I want to say, and I may, I'm sure I'm wrong. The takeoff on a King Air, is it around 1,500? I mean, so like, are we maybe doubling the length we need? I can only open so many Google Windows. 
<laughs> so give that a second. Uh, and, let's see. We have a 350, right? Oh, actually, it says field length on the 360 is this. It's a little more. I don't know what a 350 would be, though. So we'd have to check. But it is, it's 3180 for the jet. It looks like a 360, is, a King Air 360 is um, 3600. Oh, okay. But that is also me Googling Beechcraft's website, and they don't have 350s that they make anymore. So, yeah. Anyway, that's where we're at. Okay. Just a big decision. Um, I, I, I remember spending hours and hours and hours talking about a new plane. And I know our current King Air has had problems and been in the shop a lot. Um, but I just wanted to make sure, I don't know if it was talked about in the subcommittee or not, but I think those are things that we do need to think about because we sure don't want to buy something and then we find out we can only go to four different areas of the state. Senator Clays. And, and we did talk um, at length with the Kansas Highway Patrol and they were they were confident in this. I think the if there are areas where either the King Air or the Cessna can't land, they have the ability to transport because the Kansas Highway Patrol is all over our state, um, the ability to transport them the short lengths between those areas where they can land and where they need to be. So it, it didn't present an issue for them anyway when we had discussions directly with them on this issue. Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How old is the King Air that we, we currently have? I believe it is 22 years old, 21 years old. It's a 2001. All right. Senator Hawk. Thank you. Uh, is the Highway Patrol okay with this uh, selling it at or prior to delivery? Uh, I'd hate to get caught into some kind of a thing where we need the, the new plane and we think it's going to come on Monday and it gets delayed for some reason. So... We're without a plane. Do we need to have a little bigger window on that? Senator, if the highway patrol's okay with it, I am. But it just occurs to me that things don't always get delivered in today's supply chain economy when we think it will. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. They're estimating about 11 months to delivery. Um, it'd be about <clears throat> roughly January of 2023. Um, I did not confer with the Highway Patrol specifically on this issue. However, the King Air has been down for periods of 60 days or more, most recently in November and December of last year. So it is not a reliable aircraft at this point, and, and fiddling over 30 or 60 days probably wouldn't be worth our time. Other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Senator Clays. Um, Mr. Chairman, this one's in, on the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, the health side, and this is regarding the governor's recommendation for Medicaid postpartum coverage. Quick background because it only talks about two numbers here. Currently, we're at two months. The governor's recommendation moves it to 10 this motion will move it back to six. So the motion is to reduce, even though it increases, the motion is to reduce Medicaid coverage for postpartum women from an additional 10 months to an additional six months for FY 2023. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Fagg. Question, Senator McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you tell me, um, I know the governor was an additional 10, but what did the subcommittee do? I don't have my notes with me. We did change that time period. We did not. I, I, or we just, so we just adopted the governor right, we just adopted at the 10 months. Okay, well. Senator McGinn. Any further questions, Senator McGinn? Just, just a comment. I'm, sure. 
you know, throwing out all these, like, just like this, after we had hearings in social services and had KDHE there talking about the statistics and we had people testifying that provide services, you know, it's kind of like, oh, do we want eight, ten? I feel like I'm trading tractors here today. Um, and I think this is a serious thing for women. Um, thank goodness myself or my family hasn't gone through but I do know people in my community, uh, young women who have, have killed themselves. And so I think this is a very serious thing. So um, I, just, I just hate that we're taking it lightly. Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With this change proposed, uh, do we have a fiscal note what the change would be? How much we're saving? Just quick quack, calculating, uh, Senator Alley, you know, uh, all funds would uh, be about uh, 1.6, and SGF maybe 700,000. So we're just talking two months, so it's, it's not a, I mean, it's real money, but it's. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Other questions? Senator Petty. Uh, in relation to those numbers that you just uh, mentioned, uh, the SGF is 700,000. You're talking about the 700,000 as an increase from what we currently are doing to the six months instead of um, 10 months? Actually, I thought the proposal was for 12 months. Yeah, that was, that's the savings for the, for the difference in the two months. And if I might, Senator Clays. I just want to clarify because the motion is very technical in that it is an addition and a, a change in that. Currently, it's at two. So by adding six, we would be moving to eight. If we're at two and the governor adds 10, that means it's at 12. So the governor's recommendation is 12 right now. The current setup is two. The motion makes it eight. Thank you for clarifying that. I, I would, uh, I will just say I would agree with the, the chair of the subcommittee for um, the Department of Health and Environment in that, I mean, I have just repeatedly all this session and before the session started and on the, um, the um, KDADS or Bob Bethel Oversight Committee, this issue has been um, a paramount issue that's been brought forward and that um, of, of importance to uh, women in Kansas and uh, of service that we provide. Um, so I do believe it came out as part of the recommendation for the Bob Bethel Oversight Committee. Um, that we go, that we do go to the 12 months. And um, I, I just um, am a little concerned that we are moving forward to change this. I would like to see it stay as it was. 
Other questions? Senator Hawk. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we save from the 12 months to the eight months. It, it looks like it's um, uh, in terms of all funds, um, not a lot, well, certainly more money, but state general fund, not that much money um, to prevent what might be tragedy than that we're, we're getting recommendations from some of the interim committees that have been working on it. So unless I hear some kind of uh, powerful reason why we shouldn't go to what was the 12 months and cut this back, I, I don't think I can support this change. We know Senator Clay. otherwise what the state general fund cost would be to keep the 12 months that's, that the subcommittee recommended versus cutting it back to eight months. The quick calculation that we did, it's you know, seven to $800,000. Seems like that's a very small price to pay for several lives that might be lost. And I know this is a very difficult time for some women in terms of that postpartum period. Other questions? Senator Petty. I just received confirmation. So both the Bethel and the mental health modernization, they both endorse this postpartum um, going from the two months to the 12 months. Senator McGinn. I just want to share. I think my concern is, is we're just we're playing with months rather than playing or talking about statistics. I don't know how long it takes for a woman to get out of that potential depression. And so, you know, I wished if I'd known this come up, I'd ask KDHE or somebody to be here to give us those statistics. But um I'm glad Senator Petty brought up that the Modernization Committee did make this recommendation. Senator Petty. Add to that, that and mentioning that the Bob Bethel Mental Health and Modernization. So I'm not sure who on this committee is on or has been on the Mental Health Modernization. That's been going on for two years. Uh, made up all, you know, well, legislators are on there, but providers in all areas. That, and we, it seems here that we've talked a lot about how we uh, want to, we uh, realize that mental health of our Kansans is so important. So, you know, when these kinds of issues are being um, put forward as the recommendation by these committees that we have put in place, First, the Bob Bethel is permanent, uh, but the mental health modernization, it, would just, it just seems that it's an important issue to follow through on. So, um, and as, the, as Senator McGinn referred to, uh, talking about information and the sources they're coming from, that definitely has been, those two areas, the mental health modernization and the Bob Bethel, have had this brought up repeatedly and have from multiple sources. So it's not just a piece of paper today. Senator Schollentrop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a uh, member of the Bob Bethel uh, Committee and uh, as chair of that committee for one year, this is a topic that has been discussed uh, quite often. And uh, no remedy has been brought forward until just this last year. So uh, I feel, too, that we'll probably just need to leave, uh, leave it alone. So I would. I think I'd oppose this amendment. Thank you. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just scrolling through all the states and where they're at, um, very few have extended it even to the eight months. Uh, most are at 60 days, just as the state of Kansas is. Um, there are a few states that have legislation pending that would extend it to six months, some t a few to 12. Uh, like is the recommendation from the governor's rack. Moving it to eight, give us an opportunity to see what the impact is of doing that. I think it is a nice phased approach that makes sense. We can come back and move it to 12 if that's what we see is warranted. 
but at this time, just looking at what other states have done, we would be the outlier going to 12. Senator McGinn. I'll just say, if a mother does not need the services, then the money will not be expended. But if the mother does need the services and can't get the services, then we have children without a mother. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? Okay, the motion fails. Are you ready for your center again? I, I think he still has a few more, but I was just going to give him a break. <laughs> you, you want, you got some more? You, okay, continue. S center, please. KDHE Health. Okay. This is uh, the governor's recommendation for financing Medicaid expansion. The motion is to delete 596 million, including the addition of 68.5 68 million SGF to remove funding for Medicaid expansion. The all funds deletion includes 629 million from federal funds and 35.5 million from special revenue funds. In addition, add language to lapse the SGF funding if Medicaid expansion is passed during the 2022 legislative session. We have a motion. We have a second. Senator Sloan Trump seconds. Questions? Senator Petty. I'll just add as a little footnote here. One of the things when the Senator Googled other states about postpartum coverage, that's covered under Medicaid expansion. So those 34 states that already have it would already have it under Medicaid expansion. Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, without belaboring and debating Medicaid expansion, I just want to point out that if, if we don't expand Medicaid, it actually costs us money. Now, where it used to be it would cost us money if we expanded it, now it's going to cost us money if we don't. So I'm obviously not going to vote for this, but I understand the politics. Senator Sondra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Medicaid expansion will cost us money, period. We either pay state taxes or federal taxes. Thank you. Other questions? Senator Hawk. Just relative to our budget deliberations now, uh, so I won't get into the debate on that, but there are definitely interesting perspectives on this. Thank you. Any other questions? Senator Petty. Just to add, with Medicaid expansion, we could be paying for the next 10 years of Medicaid expansion with the additional funds that are coming from federal dollars, not state dollars. Any other questions or comments? Senator Fagg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all on borrowed money, too. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. You want to be recorded? Senator Petty, Senator Hawk, yes. and Senator McGinn. Okay. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Should have thought through the order of these a little better. Let's go to the Kansas Department of Transportation. light green paper. Um, this is in relation to the transportation technology fund that we had discussed and received some information from the Department of Transportation regarding. And what I am uh, making a motion to do is to add language to allow public and private post-secondary educational institutions to apply for and receive grants from the te Transportation Technology Development Fund in KDOT for FY 2023. The language will waive the requirement for applicants to partner and projects be administered by local units of government and allow universities to match the grants with other state funding. I have a motion. We have a second. Second, Senator Alley, second. Questions? Senator McGinn. 
I don't know what this means, and I don't know how it developed. Senator Clays. So the Transportation Technology Fund had $5 million put towards it. There were um, requests for proposals last year. I think they started in October. They didn't receive a lot of response because it's an extremely restrictive, at least in my opinion, it's extremely restrictive in who can apply for the funds and also how they must be matched. It required local units of government to decide that they wanted to participate in uh, researching transportation technology, which just seems kind of odd uh, for a local of government to, to engage in um, research like that. However, we do have universities who engage in this kind of research, and perhaps they would be better uh, suited to engage in some of these projects. So I'm simply asking for this proviso language to be inserted so that universities would be eligible for applying for and receiving the grants and using their funds, which in some cases would be state dollars, because right now a local unit of government cannot use state funds to match, um, but it would allow those state universities to do so should they choose. Senator McGinn. Is there a cap? Is there an uh, end to this or just anybody, yeah. everybody? So as far as the cap, the cap is monetary. There's, um, there was $5 million allocated towards it. I believe that I made a motion previously that was adopted that moved some of that money into 2023 because the money was not going to be expended in 2022 or anywhere close to it. Um, we're talking not millions being, um, being allocated in grants, but, but maybe tens of thousands. So it just it would not be an effective program under the current guidelines. But no more than five. And, and I think it so no more than five over those two years. So I think what I did is I put three. Did I put three into twenty three? It's either two or three that's in twenty three. So that would be the cap for twenty three. The three plus the five. So the five, since it didn't get spent, it's all available in the state highway fund. 23, it's 3 million. But in 22, which ends in July, it will not spend anywhere near 1 million, let alone five. Senator Alley. The uh, post-secondary education institutions that you mentioned, as well as private post-secondary education institutions, would a uh, community college or a technical college qualify to be one of these? You mentioned universities, and I'm just saying a technical college. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when I asked to have this drafted, I did specify that I wanted it to include um, technical colleges and community colleges, so I am presuming that with that request they use the language necessary to make that happen. Thank you. Senator Petty. Uh, so Senator Clay, does this do two thin things then? Does it extend it to post-secondary institutions, both public and private, and then they can use state monies, whereas Local units of government that are now in this, that are, that can be applying for this technology, transportation technology development fund, they are still there, but they cannot use state monies as a match. Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, the way this is written is that only those um, educational institutions would be able to use state monies for the matching of the grants. Um, local units of government would not under this particular proviso. I don't have an objection to that, but it, uh, it does allow for those state universities and, and private institutions, if they had state funds, I guess technically could use that too under that. So would you be open then to allowing local units of government to use state monies as well as match grants? Senator Clays. 
you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I don't have an objection to that. I really just wanted the opportunity for these universities to have access to it. I don't know that any local governments are just itching to go out and conduct research on transportation topics. So if that were the case and they had state funds that they wanted to use to match, I don't have an objection to that. Senator Petty. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to offer an amendment to this proviso that it allows local units of governments to use state monies as a match for such grants as well. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Senator Clays. And this is technically a substitute motion, so you're just taking the entirety of the proviso, adding that in, and if we pass this, it's Thank you. the proviso plus. You're absolutely correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Senator Clays. Oh, let's pop down to the Kansas Highway Patrol again. Do we have the one on the uh, career progression plan, comprehensive pay plan, whichever CPP means? Okay, fantastic. Oh, yeah, these are two. All right, we got two of them. So we'll start with um, the, uh, the Corvette, the notorious Corvette. We had um, the superintendent of the Highway Patrol in to discuss this. I also serve as vice chair of the Transportation Committee on the Senate side. Uh, in transportation, we have a bill that addresses the issue that Mr. Martinez ran into with his uh, Corvette being uh, confiscated by the Highway Patrol and the attempt to destroy it as a uh, confiscated piece of property. The bill, however, is forward-looking, so it fixes the problem moving forward. It does not give Mr. Martinez back his car. Mr. Martinez has not committed any crime, and Mr. Martinez deserves to have his car returned to him. The car has been sitting for five years, unfortunately, and in that time out in the elements, it is likely to require extensive restoration. So I have a motion that takes care of the backwards-looking portion of that fix, and that is a motion to add language to have the Kansas Highway Patrol return the vehicle to Mr. Martinez and $20,000 all from the State Highway Fund to Mr. Martinez and to increase the transfer from the State Highway Fund for the same amount. We have a motion, we have a second. Senator Alley, questions? Senator Alley. Yes, the, the fix for that, could you go into the fix for this problem? Senator Clays. Yeah, it's really technical jargon, but basically what happened is when he bought the vehicle in Indiana, it was brought to Kansas, it was inspected, it was found that a VIN plate that was on the vehicle, now they burn them into the, the vehicle, but these are VIN plates. When it was being restored in Indiana, that was removed and then replaced. And when it was replaced, it was replaced with a different kind of rivet. They found that to be uh, a modification that fit the legal definition of attempting to deface, etc. a VIN, and they confiscated that vehicle. And so your, <laughs> if I may, Mr. Chairman, your really. fix in is in is in a bill. Is that correct? Fix moving forward is in a bill. When we had the superintendent here, we asked if he minded if we fix this for Mr. Martinez, and he said that'd be a okay. So that's what we're doing, okay. fixing it going backwards. Okay. And if the bill does not pass this fix is still in the budget correct and it's still going to be taken care of for mr martinez if it makes it through this process yes okay thank you senator, senator mcginn so how come mr martinez didn't go through claims against the state senator Clays. uh thank you mr chairman I don't know that he has a claim against the state. The the property, car. while it was confiscated, technically he, it was found that he he owned a piece of property that was illegal. I don't know what they call it. 
contraband is what they were considering it. So they confiscated it. The, the law backs them up. We do have a law that says that they can take this vehicle and, in fact, destroy it. So that's, that's our law. Okay. May I? Senator McGinn. So do we have any other people that have contraband and we've confiscated their car? I just, are we treating Mr. Martinez different than we are other people that have this legal problem? Senator Clays. I'm unaware of anyone else who has run into this particular problem where a, a restoration project has resulted in a VIN being considered defaced and had their vehicle taken by the Highway Patrol. I'm imagining in other instances discretion is exercised and this does not happen. Just want to not change precedence to how we handle these. Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm looking at the 20,000. And uh, I don't know if that's arbitrary or not, uh, about $4,000 a year for uh, sitting fees. And I assume that's for the repair of the vehicle. I wonder if the maker of the motion might consider a friendly amendment for up to $20,000 for repair. It may not take that much to repair the vehicle. And I consider, I consider that friendly up to $20,000 is the for motion. Repair. Yeah, for repair. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you. So is this is another substitute? No, let's just, just say that I read it that way in the first place. Add language to have the KHP return a car and up to $20,000 for okay. repair, all from the State Highway Fund to Mr. Martinez, and to increase the transfer from the State Highway Fund for the same amount. That's the motion. Good with you, Senator Alley. He says it's good. Okay. All right. Any other questions on this? Uh, Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? You want to be recorded, Senator again? Okay. Senator Clays. You guys are going to get so tired of me. All right, Highway Patrol, number two, add 3.6 million all-state highway fund to enhance the KHP career progression plan and increase the transfer from the state highway fund by the same amount. We have a motion, second. We have a second. Senator Alley seconds. Okay. <laughs> causing trouble over here. <laughs> okay. Questions on this. Senator Clays, would you like to explain this? Uh, I would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the KHP has a career progression plan. It's a little bit different than just adding 5%. So the governor's recommendation currently is to add 3.6 million, and that would have been the equivalent to giving everyone a 5% raise. However, the career progression plan doesn't give everyone a 5% raise. It spreads it out in a progression plan that's a little different than other agencies and how they operate. So what this addition does is it brings everyone up to at least the 5% that uh, raise that is being implemented uh, that we voted on yesterday. It would also, I guess I should continue, it would also increase the starting pay so that the Kansas Highway Patrol is competitive with cities and uh, other entities that are paying upwards of $25 an hour to start. Currently the KHP is at roughly 20. Senator McGinn. Didn't we pass a bill about seven years ago to add a formula so that the Highway Patrol could get more money? And I think it was through the Department of Revenue, or not Revenue, uh, DVM, which is the Department of Revenue. So they already receive another fund of, of streaming of money to get more money. So now we're going to take from the Department of Transportation to give them more money. In addition to, wouldn't they be included in that 5%? You said that some people wouldn't get that? Senator Clays. Correct. So the governor's recommendation does not have 5% for each individual in the Kansas Highway Patrol. Instead, it takes the equivalent amount, which is $3.6 million, and it puts it into the career progression plan, which you are speaking of. We've passed that. We created the career progression plan. 
by funding the career progression plan, several people would receive 2% raises instead of five. So this money would then make them at least whole on their 5%. So that way we're at base fair to those individuals. Otherwise, we would have a scenario where everyone in state government received a 5% raise except for those master troopers over in the highway patrol. Senator McGinn. We have a lot of departments um, and um, like uh, fee-funded commissions who are have changed their uh, the, any raises they get to merit, and they made that choice so that they could give a 2% raise to somebody that just shows up to work and um, pours the coffee and does what they're supposed to do versus somebody that goes over and beyond, they can get more than 5%. Called, I mean, so it seems like what they have is a merit-based system, and we have other entities that have that as well. Senator Glees. So I, I hope I'm explaining it clearly that, yes, that's, there's going to be, if, if we just leave it the same, there's going to be a, a very large group of highway patrolmen who will receive two to two and a half percent raises while everyone else is receiving five. It does on the front end, though, increase, and this is why the career progression plan exists, it was intended to increase that starting pay so that we were more competitive. So by putting these dollars in, you are also increasing at a pretty good clip the starting pay for a highway patrolman as well that is beyond 5%. And the reason for that is we've had six recruits. We went from 43, 50, 47 to six. And Right now, the competitive nature in law enforcement, because so many people are choosing other career paths, uh, is that we are losing uh, highway patrolmen at a very high rate, either to retirement or just moving on to another organization like the Wichita Police Department. At the same time that we lost 62, the Wichita Police Department had its largest classes in its history. So the pay differential there is about $5 an hour to start. And this would take care of that. Senator Hopp. Just a question. I'm, I'm sort of recollecting that they got a 2.5% raise at the first of the year already. And then, so this is in addition to what they got. Sir, not, sir. Uh, uh, an adjustment where they got it. Two and a half percent earlier. Senator Glaze. I'm not aware of a two and a half percent. You mean like in January of this year? No, I'm thinking January or, or maybe it was at the start of the budget year. I'm just not sure. Uh, let me check. Senator Glaze. Okay, so here's what we think happened. There was an executive directive, 2.5% went in, but it did get distributed through the career progression plan. We think, hold on, someone may change their mind. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so again, it went into the career progression plan as a lump of money 
that goes into the plan and moved people through steps. So it did the same thing that we're doing here, which is putting them through their career progression plan. It is not a 2.5% raise. It instead is taking the equivalent of 2.5% across all of that pay and putting it into the career progression plan and distributing it how they distribute it through that plan. And that is typically bottom-loaded more so so that you don't create compaction in wages. So that's what they've what they've decided to do here. So my next question is, with the other 5% that people are getting with the, the uh, pay plan that we have, is this going to be in addition to the other 5%? Or in other words, do we need to do this if the other 5% is coming, or do we just need to allow them to put it into the career progression plan? Senator Clays. The current setup right now under the governor's recommendation is that everyone gets 5% except for the Kansas Highway Patrol is getting the equivalent of 5%, which, again, then goes into the career progression plan. What it does is it ends up giving a larger percentage increase to those who are starting. It gives a very small percentage increase to those at the top of the food chain. And those master troopers and individuals towards the top all the way to majors, those guys are the ones who are getting two and a half instead of 5%. So by approving this proviso amendment, add, whatever we're calling it, that would make it so that those guys at least got the 5%. It does also add money at the bottom, though, but that's solving another problem, which is that we've recruited six people into our most recent class. We're just not competitive at the starting rate either. So it will solve that problem, and it will give us the fairness that's required to get those guys their 5% as well. And we've also put the equivalent of 2.5% into the progression plan in January. In January, yeah, that's true. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, oh, Senator Frank. I'll second his motion. I think he made a motion, no, didn't he? he? Right. Oh, oh, do we? Okay, okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Want to be recorded? Okay. Senator Clay, do you have any more? I just have two more quick ones. I promise they'll be far less controversial than that. Um, let's go to the governor's budget. This is a motion to add 10,000 to the governor's grant office for the Kansas Holocaust annual commemoration. On neon green. Go through all the colors of the rainbow here. Senator Clays, would you like to explain? Or I guess sure. it's just ten thousand dollars to the governor's grant office for the Kansas Holocaust annual commemoration. It was added also in the House. Okay, Senator McGinn. So it was added in the House, but did we have any hearings on this? Did anybody request this in our subcommittees? Senator Clays, I don't recall that happening in a subcommittee. No, I think they asked for it on the House side. In subcommittee. They don't have subcommittees. I don't. They have standing committees that do the same thing we do in our subcommittees. Right. So uh, I do not know how they asked for it on that side, but I do know that they put it in the budget. So we need to first make a motion. Oh, yeah, I move to add $10,000 to the governor's grant office for the Kansas Holocaust annual commemoration. I have a motion. I have a second. Senator Fagg seconds. Now discussion. Senator Hawk. I'm uh, just wondering if we change the amount, if it would give us some negotiating when we get to conference. Really we want negotiate it. It's a small <laughs> amount of money, but I think the point of putting it in there was just to make it so that it was not a big deal. No, 
Nej. I need I need to make an edit. I I was told they put it in, but it they had discussed it. They have not made a vote on it yet over on the House side in their budget. So apologies for the misinformation that I was given. Are there questions on the uh, ten thousand dollar allocation? Senator Gershon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What do you get? What do we get out of the? What is the Holocaust commemoration? Is it a Senator Clays. great event or something that makes it ten thousand dollars? Senator Clays. The Kansas Holocaust Commission's annual State of Kansas Holocaust commemoration takes place in late April in the Capitol Rotunda. Uh, it is an event that occurs right here in this building. Senator McGinn. Um, I've actually attended one. And uh, so, but you have it for 23, so um, why don't we just do it for 22? We're going to start this. Senator Clays. So it, it is scheduled for April 28th, 2022. I think they've already got this year dealt with. So they have this money for this year? I think they did. What, what did they do here? We could certainly pay for it this year, too, if you'd like, through that grant office. But I do have it as 23 is the request that they made. Senator Hawk. Uh, well, I don't question that this is a good idea. It sounds like if it's an annual com uh, commemoration, have they been doing it for several years? And if so, how have they funded it in the past? Are we creating a precedent that we're going to be funding this? Senator Clays. Right. And, and I think they, um, they make... Uh, application for these grants, but no, I don't know that. I don't know what they've done in the past. I recall having a discussion about this probably three or four years ago in the uh, House Appropriations Committee, and I just do not have a good recollection of exactly what they ended up doing to get the financing for these. But it's roughly $10,000 annually that they um, spend on this event. General. Yeah, I... I, I might want to put this one off to Omnibus just because I want to know how they've been funding it in the past and what the expectation might be. Sure, it's a great idea, but if they've been doing it, I wonder how they've gotten the money and is there some other source of money that, uh, and we're just adding to it. So I, I don't know what the need is really. Senator McGinn. Um, it, you know, it was a very moving presentation, not well attended. Um, I would like to move it off to Omnibus because I would like the people that have requested this money to come before Ways and Means and tell us about it. So Sen we'll have time after we kick this yeah. budget out if that ever happens. Yep. Sen Senator Clays, would you be uh, okay with that? I am okay with that. I would amend my motion to move it to Omnibus. Any other questions? Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there any matching funds that go into this from outside sources? Senator Clays. I, I don't know that. I think those are questions that could be an answered by the individuals asking for this. Okay, committee. Uh, so the, the motion, I guess, we'll need a motion to move it to Omnibus. I, I amended my motion. Oh, he amended his motion. Okay. And by the second by Senator Fagg. Okay. All in favor of moving to omnibus? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Senator Clay, um, you done? Excuse or? me, Last let me interrupt, Mr. Mm. Chair. Uh, I was supposed to be in rules and regs 12 minutes ago. I just wonder how much longer if, you know, and because if we continue, yeah. I think I'll yeah. probably go start writing some amendments here and we can, I'll just come back with my list. I think he said he had one, and I think you had one, and 
Senator Patty had has one, and I have one. So I think we've got one, we two, three, wrap four the more. Wrap budget up and all that. So yeah. okay. All right, Senator Clays, finish her up. All right, last one, Kansas uh, Department of Education. This is a motion to, uh, do we have one for this one? Yes. Yep, that's it. We've circled all the way back around to yellow. It is a motion to add language for the Kansas State Department of Education to fund school safety and security grants to school districts up to $5 million within existing resources for FY 2023. Can you explain, uh, Senator Clays? Sure. Yeah, the School Safety and Security Act grants, I believe we started in 2019, FY 2019 anyway. Uh, then it was allotted in 21 and 22 by the governor. And then I think there was a request to use federal funds. That was found to not be a qualified use of those funds. And so this would have the Department of Education use the sizable increase in funding for a $5 million allocation to the School Safety and Security Act grants. These grants uh, fund things like school resource officers. And that was a motion to add. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? Senator Fagg seconds. Question, Senator Petty. Uh, thank you. And. Um Senator Clays, was this part of the enhancement request from the Department of Education? I, I could not. Senator Clays. Yeah, I could not tell you that. What I do know is that when they went through this last time, the they were asked to use, is it ERISA? Is that what we, yeah, as, as, ESRA. Sir. What, ESSER, there we Sir. go. Sorry, lots Sir. of acronyms. ESSER funds uh, for it. When that was, um, denied because it was not qualifying um, that just meant that there was no funding for them at all so this would fund them for 2023 and presumably moving forward so uh, i mean i don't have my education stuff in front of me here so i can't verify that but there were items on their enhancement list i can remember if this is one but you mentioned sros or security officers but doesn't this also go for Safe entrances and... Absolutely, yeah. So the first year that we had it... Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Senator Clay. Waiting, waiting for our condition here. Um, so the first year that we had it, I believe we, we allocated $5 million for it, and then we received about $13 million in requests. So um, it, it was a, a successful program. Um, there were many requests for the funds, whether it was for constructing, as you had mentioned, uh, entrances that had safety features, moving offices or entrances so that um, they had a single point of entry, um, and then school resource officers, those types of security features were eligible for those grants and, and are. It just didn't have the funds due to the ESSER deal being declined. And of course, the allotment in 2020 that took place for FY21 and 22. I'm not sure. I just know that I do think that most schools have now, you know, over the time, over the last five years, done all of the safety features. So you're probably right in that it's mostly going to go for security officers. Senator McGinn. So this is, um, I believe, Speaker Reichman's uh, idea a few years ago. I remember it being allotted, but I thought we came back and paid for it. But you're saying we paid for it out of ESSER when it came back? Because I thought we put it back in. Senator Clays. Um, yeah, so we it, it was put back in, but it was put back in re requesting that it be paid for through ESSER funds. And so, those were declined. Previously, when it was paid for, though, it was allotted. So there's paid for 
paid for and allotted, paid for and allotted, use ESSER funds, ESSER funds declined. And that's where we're at today. So now we're going to fund using existing resources. Senator McGinn. So I'm surprised it's not in the House budget already because this was a Speaker Reichman thing that every time I dealt with the budget, it always got put in and it was extra money. So what you're saying is now they just use their existing dollars, SGF dollars that they receive to do a program that we requested as a legislature. Senator Clays. Correct. So a mandate without money. Pardon me, Senator Clays. Well, I, I would take issue with a mandate without money when we're adding a hundred and some odd million dollars to the budget, but it's, it's out of that that, yes, they should fund school safety features that we're requesting. I do believe it is also different, but is in the House, or has been discussed, I don't know if they've actually voted on any of this, but has been discussed as a or is in as a um, as an ad at five million, same same amount. Senator McGinn. Amy, is it in the House budget? can talk to him. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so it's, as, as I noted, it is an ad of 5 million SGF on the House side. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Senator Hawk. Uh, I see this uh, because we're saying take it out of existing resources as actually reducing base state aid to schools. So it seems to me if we're going to put it in here, it ought to be an ad of SGF, just like I heard the House did. I don't know what the thinking is on that, on the maker of the motion. Senator Clays. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, we can have them change the way that they allocate their funds, and that's certainly an allowable thing to do. So when we added items yesterday, we also asked for those to be paid for, for through existing resources, and I think this is a fine thing that is education centered that can be paid for using existing resources. Senator Hawk. Uh, I would argue with you a little bit. If, if every school district got it, I would say that. But since it's a grant program, I think if we're going to do it, we ought to do it as an ad. Thank you. Senator Clays. OK, any other questions? Senator Alley. I kind of agree with uh, Senator Hawk that if it's a safety issue, well, all schools should be doing something. And I would like to move this to omnibus. Make that motion. Okay, we have a motion to move this to omnibus. Second. Discussion? Senator Clays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't think that that's going to change between now and omnibus. If we put this in here at five million using existing resources, it is different than the House and it will be conferenceable. If we don't have it, it's conferenceable. I'd rather the Senate position be that we take school safety and security seriously and that we would like to have something done when it comes to the funding of some of our school resource officers. Uh, clearly, they are uh, an important part of the educational environment. Senator Alley? I still have a motion on the floor. Any, any Senator uh, Petty? Well, I, I think one thing, if we did put it off to omnibus, it would we would get clarification about, and like I said, I'd have to look, but whether it was part of the of the enhancement request, um, when it comes to school resource officers, we should all be clear about how they're actually paid for by school districts. You know, a lot of times they're contracted with their local police department, and their salaries are paid by the local police department. Uh, so um, these funds in the past, if I'm remembering correctly, were mostly for 
building improvements for safety and security, and one of the, I believe, one of the reasons why it wasn't included was because there's not that great of need because we've had this in place for some time and schools have put in place. If you're familiar with the schools in your district, you're aware of that. So I would agree. I think we should put it off to Anna so we can get more information. Any other questions on pushing this off to Omnibus? All in favor of pushing this off to Omnibus? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. So it looks like we have, uh, the ayes have it, I think. Those in favor of the uh, pushing off, raise your hand, please. Five, three, okay. So, those that oppose? So, yeah, okay, it was, that was the end of yours, Senator Clay. Thank you. Next, we'll move on, Senator McGinn. My amendment's coming around to you in um, budget form, not in language form, uh, so that will be very clear for you to see. Uh, this has to do with EMA, M, EMS, um, ground and air transportation. This is through the KDHE budget. Uh, the EMS folks uh, missed that budget. It was quite early during session and uh, came to me and asked um, if they could get the cost to raise the rates of the Medicaid, Medicare reimbursement to 65%. The House put in the ground ambulance services that you'll see down there at the bottom, and all I'm doing is adding that plus the air ambulance um, services as well. So your SGF is the 4.4. So I make a motion to increase that. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Senator Fagg? Questions for the air ambulance addition. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Did you have any other, Senator again? Senator Alley, did you have anything? Senator Solentrop, did you have anything today? No. Senator Fagg? Senator Hawk? Three. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> Senator Kirshen? Senator Petty. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, this, is a, this is actually a correction to, or a change in a proviso that you already have, and it's on purple paper. paper. So we have, I'll just talk about this coming around. Um, we have a proviso currently in our budget concerning JCAG, and um, that proviso had them reporting um, to their their the youth serves and their performance outcomes, reporting it as on September the 20th to the Juvenile Justice Oversight Committee. Um, after further consultation with, um, with the JCAG, um, this is um, amending that to be October the 20th instead of September the 30th, because that would then coincide with the report that they do to DCF. I didn't catch it, it coincides with what? A, a report that they already make to, to DCF. Okay, so just be one report to two at the same time. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we have a motion. We have a second. Senator Hawk. Questions on moving the date for JAG-K? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is that what you had, Senator Petty? I I, uh, I do have a, a um, uh, amendment to deal with the issue that we currently are putting off to Omnibus concerning the School for the Deaf, if you'd like to look at it now. If, if you, do you have it, that would be fine if you want to do it. It's on white paper. S sorry? Me? It's an amendment. It'll go fast. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, would you like me to speak to this? Yes. Okay, so currently um, on our on the yellow sheet that we had, had that we dealt with earlier this week, um, there was revenues totaling six hundred and sixty eight thousand eight hundred and sixty four uh, SGF um, for phase three and phase four. And um, this uh, amendment speaks to adding it comes up with that total amount of money, but adding 368,000 all GSGF for the ch children ages birth to three for the language assessment program. And that, and then for the three to eight, because it actually, I mean, it sounds like you're covering both three year olds both time, but it's, it, it starts, birth to three ends just as they get to be three years old. And then the next group is three to, the rest of the age three to eight, and that would add language requiring the Kansas School for the Deaf to implement a fee for service model to fund the full implementation of the language assessment program for ages three to through eight, uh, through fees built for school districts up to four hundred ninety-eight thousand ninety-three thousand one hundred fifty-seven for twenty-three. Also, the add language that the language assessment fee fund shall be established as a no fee limit fee for the purpose of assessing a fee for services for the language assessment program to the Kansas School for the Deaf. Um, this is an item that's been uh, being worked on with um, the uh, Kansas Department of Education and the Kansas School for Deaf. I think there we've had discussion about, I mean, it seems that everybody sees it's very important to fund this. There's been discussion about the original legislation. I will just share with you yet that the original legislation that was established in 2016, Senate Bill 323, um, actually um, had no funding in it, but um, it did speak to provide either through early intervention services administered by the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, that would be the 03, and or a child is three years of age and older through the school district in which the child is enrolled. So the original legislation spoke to working with those current ent those entities we already have in place. This actually then established this funding to do that. So that's a motion. It is the motion is the paper is the material you have on the white page. Okay, and we have a second. Second by Senator Kirshen. Discussion on uh, the amendment. Senator, Senator Hawk. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm a little confused, Senator Petty. So is this for omnibus, but you're saying that this be considered an omnibus since we put that off to omnibus uh, earlier in the week? Senator Petty. Or are you recommending we do this now? I'm recommending that we do this now, and that we remove it from omnibus. Thank you for that. I guess one question I'd have, Senator, is uh, on these fees, uh, the schools are okay doing this fee? Correct. That's, I mean, that, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That process is in place. So basically what's been in place hasn't been funded, and this is the funding source that you've been working on with well, the schools? Well, of course, re remember that this is talking about uh, assessments that are new, that they haven't been, this is now for assessments three and four. Correct. Phase three and four. Yes. Right. Other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. That concludes your Senator Petty. Okay, thank you. Uh, committee, I have, uh, I have one that on the uh, maintenance. Just a little history on this. Uh, we've talked numerous times about the deferred maintenance at the universities. It's a uh, billion, two hundred million dollars, and going up every day. Anyway, um, I'd like to add ten million dollars 
to the governor's recommended $25 million, to make that a total of $35 million, uh, goes to the Board of Regents for deferred maintenance. And then we're going to add language that requires a one-on-one -on -one match with the region schools. I'd also like to add 20 million SGF to the Board of Regents for demolition of buildings that need to be raised. And I'd like to de dedicate 750,000 of the tw 20 million to Washburn University for their demolition because they don't get regular funds from uh, through the uh, regions and add language requiring these funds to be used for building demolitions only. That's my motion. Second by Senator Fagg. Questions? Let them begin. I'm certainly going to support my chair. Just a couple comments. I'm all for adding $20 million to start tearing down buildings. Um, but I, I don't know if Shirley has this right off, but my issue always has been with the Board of Regents on deferred maintenance is that we have twice, I believe, tried to put language in that they, when they build a building, they are to have an endowment to start taking care of that building. And I, I feel that it is not um, uh, enforced or, um, what do I want to say, uh, regarded as something that they should do. And that's just a statement, and that's it. Yeah, well, thank you, Senator McGinn, and I don't disagree. And we need to make sure that those funds are going into these new buildings so we don't get into the same issue down the road. And, committee, I, I, I've worked on this throughout the session, and hopefully by next year I'll have something a little more concrete and sound for a, a long-term fix. This is just a, a start for this year, and then um, hope to implement uh, – uh, some legislation next year that will be a long-term fix. Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, uh, the $20 million for demolition, I think that is necessary, but I thought that could come out of the, the governor's recommendation for the $25 million. Uh, it's obvious if you look at the requirements that we have right now, we're looking at over a billion dollars for demolition, I mean, for uh, deferred maintenance. This $25 million is a drop in the bucket for that. Uh, I thought we were going to take 20 million out of the 25 that the governor recommended for deferred maintenance and start the demolition and not fund. I, I don't know what we'd be using the $10 million out of the uh, adding it to what are you going to accomplish by that? Here's my thoughts, Senator. Uh, been looking at, like I said, uh, uh, fixing a, a long term fix. And if we could get to a point that we could put in 300 million, has to be matched by the re regions for another 300 million, that makes 600. You take the 40, 42 uh, from the mill levy that they get each year for deferred maintenance. We take that over a 10-year period. That's another little over, you know, 400 million. And long term, uh, after 10 years, it's it's been paid for with a one one-time cost of 300 million. But this 35 million, I'm using that for just the first year. So when we get the program in implemented in, into legislation. We'd have to go just a little less than that, but this is at least the first year they can get started. That's the thought is to get, get started on these programs. Senator Saltron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has been a sore subject for quite a while, as we all know. <clears throat> and uh, there's one, been one region in particular that has focused on this and uh, space utilization. Uh, he's done a fantastic job. Uh, we've asked him to put a uh, dashboard together on uh, the process and procedure of identifying the buildings and their uh, date of uh, demolition, et cetera. He's made an attempt to have that first version uh, completed. It wasn't quite to what our expectations were, so he's further, uh, his further efforts is to revise that 
and uh, put it in more certain terms. So yes, this is a stopgap measure, and we do need to wait until I think the entire program is presented so that we know and we have documentation of what is going to take place. Thank you. Yes, that's ex exactly what I'm trying to do here is just kind of get started until we get the, the, all the information to put a good bill together and make sure we take care of the, the whole problem. Other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Committee, I have a couple of just cleanup um, bills. I, uh, did you pass them out? Just some language cleanup for uh, the bill. Okay, we'll start out with the pink one. Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Service, the FMAF fund, add language to the other medical assistance account of the state general fund, 039-00-1000-3002 for fiscal year 2023 to allow for any unencumbered balances at the end of 22 to be reappropriated into 2023. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We also have some cleanup language on the uh, Board of Indigents uh, Defense Service on the yellow sheet. So again, this is just some cleanup, cleanup language for the staff. The yellow sheet add language to the Board of Indigents Defense Service to set the maximum compensation rate for the assigned council at $120 per hour for fiscal year 2023. And we, we do have a bill that's still under the line. I Hopefully we'll get that worked, which will take care of this. But just in case we don't get the bill, uh, this allows for the change in the bids that we had all agreed to earlier. So I'll make a motion. Second by Senator Clays. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The last one is on the green sheet, Kansas Department of Health and Environment, the Rural Hospital Innovation, Innovation Grant Fund. Appropriate the Rural Hospital Innovation Grant Fund as a no limit fund for fiscal year 2023. I make that a motion. I have a second by Senator Clays. Any questions? It's a um, cleanup for the staff. I can get it no, more. Already, already yes, right. It's just cleanup language is all we're doing. So any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Committee, I think unless someone had something they forgot, we have completed the budget. So I would uh, recognize Senator Clay's. Mr. Chairman, I move we take the contents of Senate Bill 422 and a substitute be made Senate Bill 444, and that staff be given the levity to make any technical changes as needed. And a substitute be passed. I have a motion, second by Senator Fagg. Any questions on the bill? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> you want to be recorded, Senator Saltrop? Okay. I wait a minute. Good 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, normally we do roll call vote on the budget, so we will do that. Allie? Clays? Aye. Bag? Aye. Hawk? Aye. Kirshen? Aye. McGinn? Aye. Petty? Swellen Trop? Dillinger? Aye. Committee, I think that concludes our work. Thank you all for all your hard work and time. Yes, there is lunch out there for everyone. Oh, sure. Thank you. We, we would like to thank uh, uh, the, the lunch from Dairy, Dairy Kine and the 1861 Consulting. So thank you, Derek, and uh, 1861 group. We, we appreciate lunch. With that, we are adjourned. <laughs>